and we start now. Hello and good morning. Well, I wanted to say, but then I realized that we, for the first time, are with our keynote in the afternoon already. But, but good morning is also true because we have also audience from the United States, for example. So hello and good afternoon, dear ECP participants. My name is Holger Banks and I am the initiator of ECP now for the fifth time and in February this year, the first time in the pandemic as a digital ECP. I warmly welcome you to our ECP founder keynote. And you know maybe from the ECPs before that's already tradition to invite a founder team so that we can listen to their founder story and yeah, to learn from them and uh, also to be impressed, I have to admit. So today, this is all about Peel Pioneers from the Netherlands. And this is the first investment of the new European Circular Bioeconomy Fund, or the abbreviation is ECBF. Not easy to learn, but uh, you have to keep it in mind because this is really a very interesting and very important vehicle to really foster bioeconomy and circular economy in Europe. The founders of Peel Pioneers developed a circular solution for orange peel left over after making fresh orange juice. And uh, Peel Pioneers is now the largest producer of raw materials from citrus peel in Northwest Europe. So this is very impressive, I think, and uh, it's a great pleasure for us to have uh, two of the founders with us here at the fifth ECP. And these are Sütze van Stemford and Lindy Hansen. Welcome. And if everything works, now your cameras should go on. Hello, Sütze. Hello, Hoger. Good afternoon. And Lindy, hello. Hi. Yeah, welcome. And uh, before I hand over the digital floor to you, I would like to introduce you both with some sentences about Peel Pioneers and your position. And uh, then you can take us away into your historical trip of Peel Pioneers and your own personal founding story. And I am quite sure, and we discussed it in advance, of course, to prepare this day. I'm really very curious uh, to learn more about your interesting and fascinating story. And I'm also very proud because we have something in common, yeah? the orange. And I'm looking forward to your story. Sütze van Stamford. Sütze, you are not only founder, but you are currently also the CEO and the chief technology officer. You studied chemistry at the University of Amsterdam and co-founded Peel Pioneers with Bas van Pieringen and Lindy five years ago in 2016, I guess. Amazing, in 2018, you built the first citrus peel processing plant ever in a non-citrus producing country. So that's really great USP already. And your next plan based on your successful funding experience will be to provide a clean tech solution for a growing waste stream later this year. Sütze, you are responsible for technology development, of course, as the CTO and you are the general manager of the team. Lindy Hansen, Lindy, you are also a founder of Peel Pioneers and now on the supervisory board in order to support the team and scaling the company. Of course, you are in a growth phase now and uh, you are also founder of Teco, which brings sustainable innovations into the market. And so one can say, this is my summary, sustainability is in your blood, Lindy and Sütze. And I, I would assume in the blood of the whole team because I like also very much the photos you have uh, with the oranges and each a different one and it's already very enthusiastic so I love that. So now we are very much looking forward to your story. It's our second in the history of ECP, it's our second tandem keynote and so we are curious, we are listening to you and your founder story and uh, I think Sütze will, will begin and then Lindy you will take over the floor is now yours and afterwards <laughs> we will have we will have a discussion so i prepared already a couple of questions but we also start a q and a but now i'd be silent and 
let's now your floor. Please take over. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, so we actually agree that Sitsu would take uh, would 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 introduce few pioneers, and then we together will try to answer all, all, all your questions. Yep. So I will thank you for the elaborative uh, introduction, uh, Holger. And I love the tie, of course. I should have worn my own orange tie uh, today. <laughs> yeah. as well. Um, I will try to share a presentation that we uh, prepared for you today. Um, and in the next 20 minutes or so, I will uh, uh, introduce Peel Pioneers, our company, uh, uh, today to all of you listening. Thank you for joining in. Uh, it's a bit awkward to talk uh, uh, in my empty room without an audience, but uh, I will uh, pretend that you're listening very at attentively and laughing at the places where I try to make jokes. Um, so, uh, good afternoon and good morning for everyone uh, uh, joining. My name is Sietze, as Holger already said, I must congratulate you also on the pronunciation. It's not a, a, an easy name to pronounce uh, for non-Dutch sp uh, speakers. Uh, and today I will be t uh, sharing the story of Peel Pioneers um, with a catchphrase, turning citrus waste into value-added resources. So in 2016, uh, I co-founded Peel Pioneers together with Bas and Lindy in the Netherlands, uh, and, and that may be uh, the wrong place, you would imagine, uh, uh, if you're talking about orange peel recycling, because uh, there's no oranges growing in the Netherlands, maybe with climate change happening very fast in 100 years or so, but let's hope not. Uh, um, but there is a huge amount of peel around. Um, actually, uh, uh, the largest amount per capita in all of the Netherlands, I hear still a slide uh, uh, of uh, Lindy and me, and I'm gonna skip that and go to the problem we uh, found to be uh, uh, out there. So, because there's a, a lot of uh, juice consumption, uh, actually orange juice is the is the number one uh, uh, fruit juice that's being consumed. And for every kilo of oranges, you end up with uh, uh, almost half, or sometimes even more than half of peel, seeds, rags, and membranes. The, the stuff that we know all too well, because I guess most of you on a, on a lazy Sunday morning, uh, you would go out to your bakery or your supermarket or squeeze some oranges as, at home and you consume the juice, but the peel is left behind. And at consumers, it ends up in the, in the green bin uh, uh, and goes to the compost maybe, uh, or you don't even think about what happens. Um, but there has been a trend, especially in the Netherlands, um, where a lot of supermarkets, restaurants, and also industry uh, uh, starts to act upon this growing demand of fresh orange juice by pressing oranges. So I've, I've got a number here on the slide of the amount of, of, of tons of citrus peel. And citrus is, of course, a bit broader category that also includes the limes, the lemons, and the grapefruits. But orange is the dominant one that are wasted by companies. So not uh, uh, individuals like you and, my, uh, and myself, but companies like supermarkets, like the juicing industry, and like uh, 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 restaurants um, uh, that are wasted every year. And you would maybe think, well, good for you, what, what do we need to do about that? There's probably already a good solution for that. And actually, uh, there isn't. Uh, when we started our company, we, we, we spoke to Renewi, which is a UK listed company and the biggest commercial uh, waste processor in the Netherlands and also active in some neighboring countries. And they said, well, uh, this peel, it's very acidic. It doesn't compost very easily. And it's also not good to turn into biogas because the gas uh, then smells uh, 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 like oranges. And that may smell, that may sound uh, like a, a, an improvement, but actually it isn't. Because if there is a gas leak, you don't want anyone to think, uh, well, well, someone has bought a new perfume uh, uh, and then lit up a cigarette and we have a, an explosion. So actually it's quite difficult. And sometimes it's forbidden, at least in the Netherlands, to process these orange peels in, uh, uh, in anaerobic fermentation plants. So Basically, the only thing, uh, and that's what I want to stress here, um, what, what can be done with the peel, uh, in some, some exceptions, but is either landfill, and that's something we want to get rid of, or incineration. And incineration is, is, is really like a last resort option because it, the peel is 80% water. So basically what we're doing then is, is burning water. And I think in the 21st century, we should be a bit more clever than just try, uh, burning water especially if at the other side of the ocean, uh, uh, meaning in Brazil, South Africa, Florida, there's actually 
uh, money to be made from uh, bio-based chemicals based on the orange peel. So um, as Holger mentioned, I studied chemistry and uh, in my studies, I, uh, I did a project around, uh, around orange peel and, and found out that, uh, uh, that there are some, some, some interesting chemicals and I will talk about this later, to be retrieved from oranges. Uh, and this is one, one, on the one hand, you can make uh, something good out of it. And on the other hand, there's companies paying money to get rid of it as a separate stream. So that's also important. It's quite easy to, to separate the peel from any other uh, organic waste uh, companies might have. So that's two important notions. So the solution Peel Pioneers has found and has been working on for the past few years is a, a, a biorefinery way of looking at this waste problem. So really looking into what's in there, what gives it taste and color, what gives it structure, and how can we isolate that and turn it into products, base, base products, resources for companies out there uh, uh, that have a, a demand for this. So basically what we do is we offer a, a more sustainable way of processing orange peels uh, uh, for companies and often, almost always also a cheaper solution uh, uh, actually, there uh, has been a, an increasing uh, uh, um, taxes in the Netherlands uh, that uh, demotivate companies to send any waste streams they might have to incineration plants. From, from the thought that the higher we go in the biomass valorization pyramid, the better it is. And then we shouldn't incinerate uh, stuff on a massive scale. No, we should isolate streams that are already isolated and, and turn that into valuable uh, ingredients. Diapers, for instance, is another imp uh, important uh, example of that. So that's why we can be cheaper. And I mentioned cheaper um, because we still rely on something that we call gate fee. Um, we still get an amount, an X amount paid per ton of peel uh, at the gate of our factory, um, but it is, that is lower than companies uh, uh, would have to pay if they would send it to an incineration uh, plant. So our business model is twofold. On the one, ha one hand, we earn uh, money for actually processing it and for existing. And on the other hand, uh, we sell the ingredients we retrieve from it. So here I, on the slide, I've got some examples. Um, our business uh, started uh, uh, with essential oils, uh, uh, or, uh, so that's that's a complex mixture uh, that really is the essence from an orange uh, uh, or from any fruit uh, from which it derived. You also have mint, coriander, uh, all these kind of uh, uh, different essential oils that are used as flavor ingredients in the food and beverage industry, but also in cosmetics, in fragrance, and in personal care products. And when we built our uh, first plant, and I'll get back to that in a second, um, the main product that we produced from the peels were the essential oils. And the residual, the remainder, went away as uh, animal feed, which is uh, a, 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 higher, a product of higher value than sending it off to an incineration plant, but still not uh, as high as it can be. So our R&D team, uh, uh, started working whilst we opened that first plant on further valorization of the of the peel, and um, that led to a few different products. And you see them listed below. Uh, most importantly, is our dietary fiber, which is a combination of cellulose and pectin present in the orange peel, and then opened to to make a porous uh, structure, which as a as a base ingredient in in in, in especially the food industry. Uh, acts as an emulsifier, as a thickening agent, as a, as a water binder to give, for instance, uh, meat analogs, it, a good, a good uh, binding to make egg-free products, uh, to, uh, 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 to bind soups and sauces, and, and usually to replace any E-numbers or uh, uh, other unhealthy ingredients that are used. And next to that, uh, we also make the flavonoids, uh, which are polyphenolic uh, compounds and the dominant flavonoid in oranges is hesperidin. Um, so uh, really we've tried to find a way uh, of processing it. I call it a, 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 yeah, a, a biovalorization way of, of starting with a specific feedstock, looking at what, what, is, what is available in there and then enabling that in some sort of way. And it can be a purely mechanical, that can be chemical or a bioconversion to end up with products that we then sell to, uh, to customers. Um, mostly in the food industry, also in some non-food industries, but mostly food. 
Um, and there is even more to discover. So right now we are able to make the three that I just mentioned. So the essential oils, the dietary fiber, uh, two types, uh, the flavonoids, the animal feed, and a few that are not listed in, on this uh, slide, but there is more underway. Uh, so we have an ever expanding R&D team working on finding what's, what's, the, what's out there more and, 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 and dominantly are the sugars um, because we end up with a lot of sugar, which uh, uh, unsurprisingly can yield a, a, a whole spectrum of different products and carotenoids, uh, which are uh, responsible for the orange color and could be interesting as natural coloring agents. So on the next slide, you see uh, how we together with partners end up in, uh, in specific end products. So uh, again, a few of the different products that we make and on the right hand side, some of the applications um, uh, because a, a base ingredient is, is, is kind of boring. It's, it's just a white powder or a, or a liquid and people don't really recognize it. And the beauty about circular economy is if you can really recognize an end product based and, and tell the story by, by, by sharing the circle. So to give you one example, uh, uh, Jumbo, which is one of the biggest retailers in the Netherlands, big of, biggest supermarket, is the customer of ours. So they supply us the peel. We process the peel and make available the resources. And we have a couple of products that we then uh, sell back to the supermarket, to Jumbo, uh, that they then sell to their customers. And with that, uh, tell them the story of how they uh, 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 recycle or upcycle their orange peel, a formerly waste stream into, uh, uh, into different products. So we have beers, we have uh, uh, cleaning agents, we have chocolates, uh, we have meat analogs. Uh, so there's, there's, there's very different uh, uh, things you can make with the, with the ingredients we uh, produce. And these, all of these are already on the market somewhere. Um, and the circular story about this really, really appeals to our uh, uh, suppliers of peel who can at the same time also be customers of end products. Of course, always with an uh, end product producer in between because we do not make these beers, we do not make these uh, uh, cleaning agents ourselves. We really master the process of biovalorization and have uh, partners that produce the end products. So um, I mentioned uh, we already do this. In November 2018, we built our first plant uh, close to Eindhoven in the south of the Netherlands. And that's, at least to our knowledge, uh, 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 the first peel processing factory in a non-citrus country. And why is that so special, you might wonder? Well, uh, our supply chain is, is really different. On the slide, you see a picture, of course, of, of, of my colleagues, uh, uh, beautiful people, very happily, because they were instructed to be happy on this picture, um, uh, but also of two trucks, and uh, we have more of them. And you see a logo of Renewi, and I want to mention them again. Um, they are our partner, an exclusive partner, for collecting the peel in all of the Netherlands. And of course, the Netherlands is a small country, um, but still, it's over uh, 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 more than a few thousand places every day that we visit to collect this peel in the orange bins, again the orange, uh, 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 that they keep separate for our factory to process into, into chemicals and other products. So that, that's, that's, that's reason one where we're special, so the supply chain. The second reason is although uh, some of our products aren't new, they're already essential oils on the markets, there have been for, for, for many uh, decades, um, but the way of making them is different. Um, because our, our uh, competitors, so to speak, um, in citrus countries, they all start with the fruit. And uh, fruits are uh, often bowl-shaped, uh, 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 which is way different than, uh, I'm trying to visualize this here, than a peel, uh, which is a half uh, 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 wobbly kind of thing and is not something that rolls uh, and, and it's also not something you can compress. And both of these uh, mechanical operations, so compressing or rolling it and, 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 and pinching it are the two conventional ways of, of retrieving at least the essential oils. And that's where we started with our first plant. So the second way in which we're different is really that we developed a new technology to work with peels. And although, again, it might not seem very different and uh, the composition isn't very different, it, it is mechanically a whole different story. And we also started as with a mechanical uh, unit operations in our factory in Somme. So that factory is, is still running. Uh, as I talk today, it's running. Uh, we process about 40 tons of peel per, uh, per day. 
And something that's also different uh, for us, for us, it's always the season, even uh, in winter, in summer, in spring, uh, in autumn, there's always people consuming orange juice. So there's always peel around. Whereas if you're in, 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 in South Africa or Brazil or Florida, any citrus country, you're of course dependent on the season. So we run our plant for five days a week. Um, and and we, well, the supply chain looks as follows. We have our partner Renui collecting the peel, uh, stopping every day at our facility. We process them in a fresh way um, and, and make the essential oils, uh, like I mentioned, an animal feed and a candied peel uh, for in, in bakery products. That's what we do now in Son. And meanwhile, we're building a new plant and I'll come back to that later. Um, but first to answer one of the questions that everyone always has so i would be surprised if you if you haven't and i'm going to answer it already um i hear always uh uh, uh well okay very well Sitze. sounds lovely but i'm not going to eat waste why would i uh, what wh how does that work you cannot make anything from waste right and an answer uh well yes but waste is a definition um and there is not a law any dutch or european law that explicitly states orange peel is waste uh, uh, and if uh, uh, so, um, uh, what we did is we filed for a uh, let's say an opinion on the law, and I don't know the English expression, but there's a Dutch way of doing that. Uh, that took half a year because you have to talk to a lot of uh, 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 clerks, and and that's not always the fastest process. Uh, but in the end, we uh, uh, were awarded, so to speak, or uh, we had a 10-page document that allowed us, within a lot of restrictions, of course, to uh, be able to process the orange peel, not as a waste, but as a as, a, as, a, as really as a feedstock. And, and that for us give, gave way to be able to do this. And it also shows that the circular economy, which is of course now the new buzzword after sustainability, um, really uh, is something that is not always uh, explicitly okay with the current way of legislation, but at least in the Netherlands, and I have to congratulate them there, they are uh, uh, trying to work with, uh, with, 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 um, with companies like ours, and there's a lot of uh, companies that has, has followed our precedent, um, to be able to uh, yeah, label it differently to allow to do this. And one famous example that I always mention is uh, gelatin uh, is made from slaughterhouse waste, from bones of animals. And if something is uh, uh, something that you could consider waste, then, then that is it. And there's also been exceptions for that product. So in that way, uh, it has been around for a long, a long time. Uh, utilizing something uh, that, uh, that would otherwise be thrown away is, is not something that is new, uh, um, but you start, you, we are starting to see it in many more uh, places and with many more applications. So I, I hope to have answered that question now. Okay, um, and here you see up to three different ingredients. So that were the, those were the three that I mentioned. That's Son, our first factory. Um, so um, if you want to build factories, uh, uh, that's what we found, you need a lot of money. Uh, and we don't, we didn't have that money. So what we, uh, what we did is we raised, uh, for, for Sun, we raised a first round of investments. It was about 1 million euros for those of you into the numbers. And in October, 2020, we announced uh, a, a new capital raise, uh, 10 million euros from a consortium of, uh, of bio-based investors. All of them were, uh, uh, yeah, well, well, had something to do with that. And I wanna highlight a few of them. So first, uh, first one, uh, and that's always also the new kid on the block in this consortium is ECBF. They were in, on our first investment round simply because they didn't exist three years ago. So uh, as Holger mentioned, we are uh, one of the two, I believe, first investments by the European Circular Bioeconomy Fund. And we are very, very pleased to have them on board uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, first, uh, 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 they are able to go to larger ticket sizes than our uh, current uh, investors, Stichting Doen, which is a Dutch uh, investor, and the BOM, which is also a Dutch investor. So with next rounds that will definitely follow, uh, they're also to, uh, able to grow with us. And then secondly, uh, uh, is of course, it's a European fund. And uh, well, one of our main uh, uh, paths of growth will be uh, uh, world domination, of course. But let's first start with Europe as a continent, um, and and we see we see some 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 very clear opportunities there. And I'll touch upon that uh, later as well. And with ECBF on board, we don't only have someone who uh, uh, what well, we have 
we have very well aligned the two ambitions, right? The, the, the ambition of the ECBF is also to, to foster European uh, 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 growth of bio-based uh, uh, companies and also uh, learning from each other and also expansion into different economies that all function a little bit different uh, from each other. So, so those are two important reasons why we are very glad to have them on board. Uh, the Rabobank, uh, also uh, uh, an agricultural food related bank uh, where we uh, 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 loaned a lot of money uh, and RVO, which is a Dutch institution. So there's a few press releases here uh, for for Dutch people. There's uh, there's a lot more to read, but for English there's not that many. Um, but you can find our website also in English. So I think uh, you don't need Google Translate to find some stuff about us. So what we use the money for? So the 10 million euros has already vanished like uh, snow in front of the sun. Uh, that always happens way faster than raising it is our experience. And it's two main things. First is uh, stainless steel and, 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 and pipes and all kinds of stuff that we need for a new plant. So uh, let's say uh, non-people things and people. Uh, those are the two main uh, topics that we, uh, uh, that we invested the money in. So a new factory and team expansion. And both uh, should, should lead the way into a more professional company. So first I'll talk about the plant. And of course I cannot disclose any uh, PNIDs or, or technologies, but I, I'm gonna share with you uh, 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 the factory. And it looks like we've built something that's on poles and you would think that's very not easily accessible, but that's actually below the ground uh, because we're still in the Netherlands. So everything is shifting constantly. So that's why it's, it's, it's based on these uh, poles. Okay, um, so in June 2021, uh, 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 Pill Pioneers will open this new facility. And I don't know how many people are uh, listening to this at now, but I'm just gonna say it. Everyone is cordially invited, of course. Um, we plan to, to, to uh, postpone uh, the, the, the real opening until we would be able to hug each other again. So who knows what, when that will be. Um, but in June, at least we will be starting uh, productions there. So that's already in a couple of months time. Uh, so what, where are we? We are in Den Bosch, uh, which uh, uh, is also in the Netherlands uh, uh, and really a, a region that focuses on, um, on food processing companies. And that's also one of the reasons why we, we chose that specific location. It's also quite central and we, uh, uh, we, we uh, could high, uh, rent a long-term uh, um, uh, hall. Uh, so the, the, the one on the picture you see is not something we've built ourselves. The main structure was already present and we expand it and fill it with our equipment. Um, so it, all in all, we have uh, 3,500 square meters of processing warehouse and, and laboratory. And for all the big chemical people here, that doesn't sound like, a, like, like much, but we come from almost 300 uh, square meters. Uh, and that's, uh, well, where we are now, really squeezed together and we're tall people. So it's, 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 uh, it's difficult for us. And right now it's, it's a factor of 10 larger. So it really feels like something. Um, uh, if, if you talk in one, in one hand of the all, you cannot hear it at the other hand. That's all right. Those are the cool things that we, we have to use portaphones to talk to each other. Well, but those are the things that we, uh, that we like. And um, what we will be doing again, well, unsurprisingly, we will be uh, 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 processing citrus peel again. And there's two reasons why we are building this plant. The first one, uh, boring capacity expansion. Uh, so roughly a factor free. Uh, we can go up to more, but then, uh, but that's, that's not design capacity, 120 tons of peel per day, which is quite a significant quantity to do. And uh, the most important one is a uh, expansion of the product portfolio. So we will be able to produce um, more uh, uh, products than just the, uh, the, the, the oils and, uh, uh, and the animal feed and, uh, and the candied peel, but a few different ones. And I mentioned them earlier, it's the flavonoids, it's the dietary fiber and a few others. Um, and that really uh, uh, improves our margins, of course, because if you take one ton of peel and you're able to stack different products on top of each other, uh, uh, that that that's better. Um, and 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 it yeah, it allows us to recover more uh, value from our feedstock, which is beneficial for both economics as well as uh, sustainability. So um, that's, the, that's the, the new plant. And then the team. So again, a picture of us. We always like to take pictures in where there's orange peel near. Uh, uh, so here we are in a truck filled with orange peel. Um, uh, this is not the most important. Well, yeah, yeah, of course, we are also investing in the, 
in the team. So that's why it's here. Um, so at the end of 2020, so a couple of months ago, we uh, uh, employed nine people. Uh, uh, next week, they're already starting five new people. And at the end of 2021, uh, uh, we will have 25 uh, people in total. Uh, so that's, that's uh, well, almost tripling uh, the amount in, in a year time. And also in the times when, when well, at least uh, uh, the whole economy is scared of what is happening uh, now. So that's, uh, for us, that's <laughs> uh, 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 on being on the good side of the, of the, of the tables. Um, and it's mostly focused on, of course, uh, production. Well, we have stuff to do in the plant. So uh, uh, really more kind of blue color uh, uh, jobs, but also R&D. Um, so there's still a lot of, uh, a value to recover from orange peel and and sales of course the products also need to be uh, sold and that's where boss uh, so the third person here is um, uh, responsible for in the in the team so what does the future hold uh, we don't know uh, but we plan uh, uh, on a couple of things uh, on our roadmap towards uh, becoming the uh, the largest peel processor of, of Europe um, first is, is, is a volume, really capturing as much volume as we can as soon as possible. We're not at the moment uh, uh, stopped or being stopped by, uh, by, 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 by being able to sell it. Uh, our current limiting factor was the factory in, in Son, and now uh, with the new factory in Nemos, the larger one, it, uh, it, it will also not be uh, sales at the beginning. So volume is, 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 is really, uh, of course, a logical way for us to, to grow, but that's, that, that, that is an ending story. Of course, we cannot uh, process peel on every corner of the street in the world um, in that way. We're different than a software company, and this is way more fun, of course, because we have a factory. Um, the second important thing is valorization, and I touched upon this very Various times, so you already know what I mean by valorization. It means stacking more value uh, on top of each other, um, and that improves the margins, uh, of course. And then internationalization, and that's something that first of we we only kind of dreamed about, but now also with ECBF on board, we uh, uh, we really see this happening, and we see that for a couple of reasons. Uh, um, I mentioned at the beginning that the Netherlands is actually, although it's very small per capita. Uh, one of the largest orange peel producers, the, uh, the largest orange juice consumption leads to the largest orange peel production. Um, but now we're starting to see a trend that has been happening in the Netherlands uh, over the last decades. And that trend is that uh, on the whole, orange juice consumption is, 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 is decreasing a little, little bit. But if you look at um, the way people consume juice, that's very interesting. Then um, fresh juice, we call NFC, which is uh, squeezed in the country where it's consumed, is growing very steadily. And um, uh, frozen uh, orange juice concentrate, which is um, produced in citrus producing countries and then uh, shipped over the ocean and then diluted with water again, um, that is actually decreasing. So more and more people are uh, 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 starting uh, to, uh, to squeeze uh, orange juice in the bakery or in the, in the supermarket or in a restaurant. And, and there's less uh, uh, yeah, uh, cardboard uh, packs uh, that are consumed. And that's beneficial for us because it shifts also the location of the peel. And that is beneficial for two reasons. First, the peel comes towards us and we encourage everyone to consume the juice so that the peel comes towards us, of course. And it leaves... Uh, less peel in the countries where it's currently already uh, uh, utilized as part of the fruit and thus decreases the amount of competition uh, uh, in the amount of um, resources, I mean. And that's beneficial for prices. So, um, and this trend uh, is, is slowly but steadily happening in countries around us like France, Spain, uh, 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 Germany, uh, uh, Belgium, and the UK. Um, uh, so that we are in, we are in talks with, with, with multiple of these countries uh, uh, to find suitable locations. Uh, 2021 will really be the year where we focus on, uh, on, on getting the second plant up and running. But after that, uh, we, we plan to uh, to go to other countries. So we're already practicing multiple languages. Uh, uh, so far, English is the only one I really master, but uh, maybe a whole guy could learn some German from you. Okay, and then our uh, last uh, slide uh, is, of course, uh, we like uh, as many of you uh, present to not only be inspired, but also to, to find a way uh, to cooperate. And uh, we, call, we call everyone that we cooperate with a P. Lieber. Uh, um, and, 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 and here I've listed a few things, of course, not an endless list. 
of things that we see uh, uh, that could uh, um, you know, that, that could be ways of, of, of cooperation. And first is R&D partners. Uh, uh, we have a interesting uh, 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 cross national uh, partnership with a, with a UK based firm um, that we cooperate with on a valorization project around uh, biosurfactants. Um, and we have some R&D projects on carotenoids and others. So if anyone in the audience uh, thinks, hey, either I've got a smart technology or I've got a demand for a specific product, then hit us up and uh, let us know uh, what we could do. So that's R&D partners. And there's also some very interesting uh, European uh, 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 subsidies, uh, grants available. Um, so really that's something that we, uh, that we uh, well, are looking actively for. Commercially, of course, we are uh, launching uh, our, our products on, on the markets. It's, well, uh, new, new products. Uh, so we're constantly also uh, looking for new applications, especially for the fibers that I mentioned. So if you're out there and you're, you're in the paints business, for instance, think, hey, I want a more sustainable paint thickener or whatever, uh, then hit us up and let us know what you think. And vice versa, maybe we could, we could learn or, or, or uh, work uh, with, with, uh, with, with different people in the audience. And, and finally, and that's maybe limited to uh, not everyone, uh, but uh, as I mentioned, uh, there will be investment rounds sure to follow. Um, we do not know yet when, and, uh, 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 or at least not exactly when, I list here 2022, uh, we do not know yet for sure, um, but that it will happen is a, is a fact. And um, well, uh, we would be uh, interested to meet any of you uh, to really uh, see what we could do together. Um, and with that, I think I've uh, talked uh, enough to earn myself a, a, a gulp of water. And I'm very curious to hear uh, uh, all of your uh, questions. Um, so uh, I'll uh, thank, uh, thank you for listening and thank, uh, thanks to ECP for being able to share our story here. Uh, Holger, I see you again. So you've, you, you're back as well, still wearing your tie. Uh, uh, so thank you very much, everyone. And uh, well, looking forward to hearing your questions. Thank you very much. And I, I will make the applause for you <laughs> and uh, also the Q&A already. We have already some questions. So I like the, your expression, waste is a definition. So this was already answered. And uh, <clears throat> I would not like to tell the question whether it was an obligation for you because orange is the color of your country to take care of oranges. But Lindy and, and Zitze, tell us a little bit more. What was the Kickstarter to, to take care about that problem? Uh, yeah, well, the, 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 the Kickstarter was actually, well, I think all three of us are, you already said it, Holger, are very um, driven to bring sustainable innovations to the market. And then you're always scouting for, okay, what's the, 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 the next big, uh, big idea we could work on? Uh, and uh, it was actually Sitsu who came up with the idea. He had an internship in the UK and he was working on actually long-term R&D projects for his, his studies on the valorization of, of orange peel. And when he came back in the Netherlands, uh, he actually noticed that, that we, have, we have a lot of fresh peels in the Netherlands as well. And that actually triggered him uh, uh, in asking himself the question, could we not do something with that? And then he, uh, we met and we all got enthusiastic about, about this idea and started working on it. And then what about the know-how? So uh, uh, the processes, was there a lot of engineering know-how you need and had, have you to build, the, to construct the machines first? Yeah, so, so uh, as Sitze uh, told a little bit about it in the presentation, so at, at first we started off mechanically and uh, the, our first idea was to go to straight ahead to the perfect process, uh, taking out all of the ingredients and making it 100% perfect perfect, uh, perfect uh, thing already. And then we actually, when we started up, we concluded that um, our most important job was actually to get the business going. And to get the business going, um, uh, we concluded we did not need to have that perfect technology-wise perfect process yet. We could start off with with simply <laughs> um, extracting extracting the oil and finding a smart logistic way of getting the peels in as a first step. And that's actually what we realized in uh, 
uh, in the first factory in Somme. So was there a lot of engineering needed? Yeah, there was some engineering needed. And of course, it's never it's never easy. It's all, yeah, on paper, uh, on paper, the principles of course work, but then if you put it in practice, it's always more difficult than you than you think. Um, and uh, and of course, this was all only the first step. So as soon as you start talking about other ingredients, uh, valorization, you start talking engineering and R&D again. So uh, by uh, by this time, so four years later, we've done a lot of engineering and R&D work. Yeah, and still ongoing. I, I have two good news for you because uh, you will be, of course, a short part in our final press release in German and in English. And the next good thing is uh, you gained a new customer. Miley Scraw is, is uh, telling, because that was already the buzzword, uh, paint thickener. You should go into the workshop by Orontech uh, starting the next hour uh, about sustainability and paints and coatings. And Miley is there and she's interested. So contact her and the partnering. And she is also asking, and maybe I, I, maybe I combine this, because there must be something like an ultimate waste at the very end. So what are you doing with that? And what about the pesticides and waxes on the peels? Yeah, that's that's that's. So thank you, first of all, for for um, well forwarding this this potential uh, cooperation. So we will uh, sure be sure to follow it up. Um, uh, so to, uh, the ultimate waste, let's say. So really, what when, what enters our factory? So the orange peel, the biomass, uh, gets utilized a hundred percent minus anything that we pick out, meaning uh, a, a moldy peel. That was also a question in the Q&A. So we, 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 we scrutinize, of course, our feedstock. Uh, we, would wanna, we would not want to have any, any unsuitable peel entering the process. But other than that, everything ends up as a product somewhere. And always our, let's say, last resort option is uh, being able to sell it as animal feed, which again, and I mentioned that in the presentation, is, is not uh, the, the highest federalization option. So we always try to make um, a food pharma chemicals. That, that's kind of the, 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 the federalization pyramid that we look uh, at. But if that's not possible, then we sell it into feed. So really, the, at the end of the day, the only thing we have uh, left is, is a bit of cleaning water uh, that we clean the factory with. And then your other question was uh, concerning uh, uh, pesticides and waxes. Well, that's also a question we get a lot. So uh, we, we, we know uh, how to answer it. Um, basically, I can answer it in, in two ways. The simple answer is all our products comply with uh, the, the MRLs, the maximum residue levels uh, uh, that are out there uh, set by the EU for, for food stuff. So we have an uh, extensive analysis program with, uh, with an independent laboratory that checks all of our products regularly, never found an, uh, an, uh, an, an exceedment in the, uh, or what do you call it, higher than the, than the level in the last two years. And uh, firstly, of course, again, we make, um, we, we, do, we do some washing, but of course these, these pesticides are quite apolar, so they're not easily removed. Um, so we cannot remove them 100%, but we make sure that our products always comply with the, uh, with the regulations. <clears throat> okay, we have other questions already from Tatjana Schwabe, for example. She will be also tomorrow in the bioeconomy panel, which is moderated by Stefan Haubold. And uh, Tatjana Schwabe, she's asking, uh, how big is the area, the region around the new plant uh, where you have to collect your peel in order to cover the plant for 100%? Because the numbers you gave us, I think 5 million tons uh, peel in Europe, and then you are doing 40 tons per day in the plant or so. So you need a lot of plants. But what is the region? Um, so, so that depends per country. Right now in the Netherlands, we are able with Den Bosch to do all of the Netherlands uh, because the Netherlands is a small country. So you would come back to 150 kilometers roughly. Um, and the way we, 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 we are starting to think about this for different, for, for other countries like that are bigger, like, like France, for instance, you would automatically end up at a, a metropolitan region. So say in France, it could be the Lyon region or the, or the Paris region. Uh, of course, where a lot of people uh, live, there's a lot of consumption in general and also of orange uh, uh, fruits and thus uh, the peel is also there. Um, the, 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 what we are, uh, what is a very interesting also side effect of the circular economy that I want to point out in relation to this question is that the way our uh, supply chain works 
is uh, that's shifting from visiting each and every location. Um, as I mentioned in the presentation, we, we used to do that. So over a thousand places per day is that the, the retailers themselves, they take back the peel uh, from the shops where it's actually produced to the big uh, uh, collection points where they also distribute their foodstuffs. And that means that we only have a, a several points to visit. And it's also uh, uh, refrigerated places. Um, and that allows us to widen our scope. So um, we believe that in, in, in other uh, uh, countries, we would be able to do a wider uh, uh, range, a wider scope, a wider uh, uh, radius around a factory, but it will never be, let's say, a pan-European uh, uh, thing. We cannot simply work with one uh, a plant, uh, uh, like the chemical industry is, is used to work. So we're kind of in between really local and, and, and not local. So I would say, uh, um, yeah, in the range of 300 to 400 kilometers in, uh, in, in any uh, country. And uh, I do not know how, how much money you will get uh, from your investment consortium, but here's the question from Stefan, uh, whether Brazil wouldn't be a good place because it's one of the biggest orange producers. Is this already in your international scope or will you focus on Europe? Well, at, at this moment, at this moment, the uh, the focus is really on Europe um, because I, I think at this point that there's the biggest uh, opportunity. Um, what I do see, but this is this is personal, and I have not talked about it with Sietse, uh, is that of course we we are developing like um, a very interesting IP in the total valorization of the peel. So eventually it might be interesting technology also to bring to uh, to orange uh, producing countries. Yeah, but that's long, long, long term. The first focus is Europe. Okay. And regarding your different products, I guess uh, six or seven different categories or areas. So what about circularity regarding these products and also regarding the CO2 yeah, uh, what is it? Footprint. Yeah, not cycle. Footprint. Can you tell us something about that regarding the different product streams? Yeah. So um, a th a, a two things that I can mention about that is, uh, so one is what we are doing is we are making available uh, products from something that was formerly a waste stream. Um, so it our competition products, let's say other fibers or other uh, essential oils from peel, is, is the same, the, the, the feedstock is the same. However, um, those are produced in an integral process with the goal of, of, of making orange juice and kind of per accident or, or uh, um, uh, as, as, a, as a result, they also produce some, some products. What we do is different. We, we, we actively scout something that is now being incinerated or landfilled in most cases and utilize that as a feedstock. And that's what it makes, what it makes uh, more uh, circular. And uh, secondly, also the transportation. Our customers are mostly in, in the Netherlands or other neighboring countries. So that saves us a lot of uh, transportation from other uh, continents. And then regarding the CO2 footprint of the process, um, also there lies the, uh, well, first of all, we're now doing a, uh, or uh, we have hired a company that uh, uh, is going to do a research, uh, like not a full LCA, but uh, uh, let's say an, an LCA focused, so a life cycle assessment focused on a CO2 footprint of our uh, products. Um, and the most important thing where we distinguish ourselves from, from competition is, again, that we take something that used to be waste. So if you look at it from the perspective, uh, one ton of peel can either go to an incineration plant where uh, CO2 goes up to the chimney or uh, it, it goes to our plant where, the, let's say, the, 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 the molecules are, uh, are, are, are being preserved and turned into products that we do not have to import from other country, countries, then it's really a benefit because the process itself isn't really a, a, a big, a big, we don't have a, a chimney with, with, with smoke going out. We have, of course, some energy consumption. We have some transportation, but transportation is the same if you would go to, a, to an incineration plant. So the really distinguishing factor is um, the nature of this, of this waste stream and that we now use it as a feedstock rather than uh, sending it off for incineration. I, I think I have a new context for you to a journal because one of our media partner, Martin Graf Utzmann, he's asking uh, a question regarding moldy peel. Is, is this a problem or uh, according to the short transport and rapid processing, it's not a problem? 
but you should talk to him. He's a nice guy like you. <laughs> we will. Well, we will. Yeah. Short answer is uh, uh, we, we, we have the process in place to prevent the, the peel from, if, if there will be any moldy peel from, from going into the process. Okay. And uh, I also had a look in, in our list of participants, and you will not believe it, but I saw him. So one of your investors is in. And uh, if, if Michael Brandkamp has uh, his mic on, uh, and we can switch on the camera, I would like to get him into the boat, um, into the game. Michael, are you here? Can you hear us? My team is working on that, because uh, what, what was the origin for your investment? Uh, Pioneers is is the first investment uh, of the ECBF and ma make a yeah. statement and, and a minute marketing for the ECBF. <laughs> sure, I mean, uh, as you can see, this is very great team. You know, you see the power, you, see, you can really uh, um, be excited about um, the way um, these people, uh, Sütze, Lindy and, and Bas and the whole team is executing this. So it's an exciting team uh, and they really want to push the envelope, they really want to become a pan-European company. So that goes along with our goals. It's also a very good example for circularity and for bio-based uh, economy. So that's really a great, great, a good example. And this company has really a good impact, uh, what is important uh, for us as well. And also what I see is the execution. So, you know, we visited the plant. And uh, we were excited about how um, uh, the, the team is executing uh, um, uh, the whole uh, business and uh, implementing the technology, which is not easy. And uh, to scale it up now from 40 tons to 100 tons and from three ingredients to seven ingredients is really uh, very impressive. Um, and uh, we are very happy uh, to be part of it, to support this. Not at the end, it's also, sorry for saying that, it's also good business. So we have seen the KPIs of this business model, which is attractive as well. So we think, um, oh, we are very happy to be part of this story and we are looking forward uh, to um, support and to accompany this great company. Thank you. Uh, Michael, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you very much for stepping in and you are also already well prepared because you are part of the panel Bioeconomy tomorrow and to the audience if you are interested to learn more about the ECBF and the plans over there and maybe you have an exciting investment be there tomorrow around noon so I have it not in mind at the moment. Michael see yeah. you tomorrow. And Thanks, this, would not be, this would not be the founder story of the ECP without asking this question. So what were the don'ts or what were the, your bad experiences where you learned a lot because it's, it's, it's always an up and down as a founder. So Lindy and, and Zütze, please tell us something about these critical moments during the last five years when you said, hey, could have been better or I don't know if you have a patent situation, there were complications or what was not so easy? Um. Um, oh, it's actually, it's, uh, it's, there were, of course, lots of things were not easy, but I'm trying to think of what, what is the, what are the highlights? I think, um, uh, I think we've had, I think if I have to mention one, I, I think we, we have had two investment rounds, uh, up to, up to this point and, um, uh, Two times, of course, with with good success, but it's also a very exciting time when you start uh, start raising raising a new investment because at that point in time, everything has to come together. So you have all those pieces of the puzzle. So commercially, technology wise, business case wise, operational wise, everything has to fit, um, and able to be uh, uh, in order to be able to convince uh, convince an investor. So it's not really a, um, uh, and I think that was, that, yeah, that was, th those were actually the most challenging times in my perspective. Yeah. 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 Of course, with good results. So that makes me very happy. But uh, yeah, it was challenging. Uh, is it so? 
Yeah, so and, and I agree with Lindy because that's really the, the time when you're also kind of, uh, it's easy to get enthusiastic about pure pioneers. We have a, uh, an appealing, uh, that's, a, that's a pun, uh, appealing uh, business. People uh, like us uh, quite fast. Uh, we don't harm anyone. But when you try to convince someone to invest their money uh, in your company, uh, they they are gonna start a hefty due diligence process and really look also to find uh, hidden skeletons, like we say. Uh, uh, is there any weak point? And if you have to defend yourself constantly, that's that's a that's a really uh, um, uh, that's really uh, 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 well not an easy time. And then I would want to mention one, and that has to do with the pandemic. So um, when that started, well started when it when it happened and hit the Netherlands uh, in. Uh, beginning of March it was, suddenly, well, first of all, all hospitality had to close, which meant 20% of our business was away overnight uh, uh, because well, roughly 20% of the orange peel that we receive comes from hospitality, uh, restaurants and, and, and whatever. And then uh, supermarkets uh, informed us that they would uh, temporarily also remove orange uh, 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 juicing machines because people were touching the buttons and, and well they think thought it wasn't it wasn't it was it was the way to do and they couldn't tell us when they would return it because no one knew what was going to happen so in 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 the space of two or three weeks we saw our uh, incoming peel going down to 20 uh, percent of the original uh, uh, and we didn't know when it would return so our message to the employees to anyone that we were in touch with was we do not know when we can start operations and everyone was kind of uh, accepting that, but we were quite stressed because we didn't know how it would end. And eventually it turned around because uh, quite soon after four to six weeks, uh, uh, the things started to get better and, and they started to put the machines back. Um, but at that point, we didn't know uh, uh, what, uh, what, what the situation would be. So that was also a stressful moment that I wanted. Uh, okay, I can, can understand that. So we had it also in our company last year when everything changed. But I learned you will grow and you are looking for people. And I know that also at ECP, we still have always have young talents from the German Chemical Society and they are very engaged from the different disciplines. For whom are you looking for? So please make a statement why to join Peel Pioneers. Of course, that was already convincing, but which positions are you looking for? Uh, so various positions, um, one, a couple of that are now like now actual vacancies is uh, we are looking for a project lead in the R&D team uh, uh, on uh, the biosurfactant pro pro project that we're doing. So um, very shortly, it, it, we have a residue stream that's high on sugars. We have a, a cooperation with a company that can turn sugars uh, into biosurfactants, so for lipids specifically. And we're looking for someone on our, on our end who can act as a project lead. Um, so as a project manager role, but also do some, we're too small to only manage stuff. So you also need to do uh, actual research uh, and application testing, et cetera. Um, so that's one active role. Another one is uh, uh, within the sales team. So we just hired a senior salesperson and we're new, now looking for like a, a, a meteor uh, sales position. And then a bit further away, and that's maybe specifically uh, well suited for this uh, audience is, as I mentioned, we are looking to go into other markets. So especially uh, Spain, France, uh, uh, Germany and the UK, we're also looking for people underground who, who, who uh, uh, maybe with more like a general profile and entrepreneurial profile, who would be interested uh, to be our, our let's say, a, a person on the ground uh, uh, that, that, that would help us starting the business there. Again, that's not something that we can promise for, uh, for the next half year or so, but it would be good to be in touch if you're out there listening to this story and think, hey, I'd like to, to set it up as well together with us. So those are a few uh, things. Okay. Thank you very much, Sütze, also for the statement. And uh, Lindy, thank you very much for this inspiring hour. And we have a lot of comments in, in, in that direction. Very inspiring. And uh, people are very thankful that you shared uh, your founder story and your growth story of Peel Pioneers. So we stay in contact. And please be, be back next year at the ECP, because I think you can, can gain real, 